Good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Tuesday? I pray that your morning got me off to an amazing start, but if not, hit that reset button and just start all over again. Sometimes the enemy wants to ruin our day before we even start our day. The kids may be acting up. The dog won't start barking. The coffee didn't start. The husband beat you to the bathroom. The wife taking too long in the bathroom. <laughs> Before you can open your eyes good, the devil is already sitting on the side of the bed waiting for you to rise so he can get started, so he can ruin your day. But today we're not going to allow the enemy to do that. We're going to rejoice today no matter what comes our way. No matter how people choose to act. We're going to stay in control of our own day. Our own peace. Our own happiness. Some things that I'm yet still learning. I keep telling you, I'm not a finished product. <laughs> if I was a finished, a finished product, I wouldn't be here. And can I tell you something else? If you was a finished product, you wouldn't be here. Just thought I'd let you in on a little secret. Let me get into this devotional. I am here reading Strength for it. Each day I'm here to give you your Tuesday strength and the title of today's devotional is Choose Freedom. Choose Freedom. And the reference scripture is Luke 4, 18 and 19. Luke 4, 18 and 19. And it reads as follows. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to, pro to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover and recovery of sight of the blind to set a, a, the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Lord want us to see and he want us to hear. He want us to pursue. He want us to recover all that he died for. We have to get in position. Clearly, Jesus came to set us free. That was today's scripture. Teach. That's what today's scripture teaches us. But anytime freedom begins to replace bondage, a battle begins in our minds. How many of you, if you would just be honest, if you have the freedom to be honest, that when you was a child, and if you was one of those kids where you had to go to church, they didn't ask you. They didn't consider you. <laughs> it, it, you know, it mattered none that you had school the next day. It didn't make any difference that you had homework. You took it with you. There's many things that you've seen, that you were taught, that you learned that you experienced. And now when you look back, because of the relationship that you have now built with God, you wonder, Lord, what happened? <laughs> How could this have went this way when really it's that way? And I had to realize that I had a relationship with the church. I had a relationship with the, the, with the denomination. I had a relationship with the bishop, the first lady, the members. But I didn't have a true relationship with God. I didn't have my own personal encounter with him. And as I began 
to now have a relationship with him. He has taught me that a lot of things and yet teaching me that a lot of things was not a heaven or hell issue. It was passed down. It was things learned. It was other things taught. It was other things experienced. And when things are passed down, you automatically feel it's the right way. It doesn't mean that it was wrong. But if it's not a heaven or hell issue, it can start interfering with your freedom and walking in what Jesus died on the cross for. I didn't understand why certain things was a tug of war. Why certain things I questioned, but I kept quiet. It just didn't feel right to me. Until God started having me to do my own research. See, at some point when you start to have a relationship with him. Your own personal relationship with him. He'll begin to open your eyes to what really matters. And what matters to him. A lot of things that I thought people was going to hell over. God was like, what type of God do you, what type of God, what type of father do you think I am? You know, we would, you know, sending folks to hell over a pair of pants, earrings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, and, you know, I'm just like, Lord. <laughs> and when he began to deal with me in the way that he did, in the way that he needed to, it made sense. I still have a few <laughs> traditional teachings, you know, in me that God is still... <laughs> He's still working on me, but I've come a long way. I've come a long way. Freedom is from God and bondage is from the enemy. God is saying you're free. Not to live how you want. Not to live how they want you to live. But to live how I want you to live. You know, in his word. He said, they've made my word of none effect. He, it's hard for God to be effective now because of tradition, because of passed down teaching. And God is trying to break that bondage. Why? Because he wants you to have that relationship with him. He wants you to know there's liberty in him. There's freedom in him. And whatever is not for you, that's between you and him. The enemy doesn't give up his territory easily. You know, <laughs> when he sees freedom coming, when he sees you no longer, no longer fighting and battling with this and with that, and God has given you peace, God has given you a different outlook, Now he wants to come with condemnation. He don't quit. He don't stop. He's on a mission. And his mission is to drag you back in bondage. He will begin to whisper lies such as, you'll never break free from that old habit. Oh, won't he do it? Won't he tell you when you get saved, you got to stop doing this? God may not tell you to stop, but he'll tell you there's another way to do it. He'll tell you you won't be able to go there. God said you may not be able to go there, but you can go here. He may say, now you're going to have to stop wearing this. And God may say, but you can wear this. 
or you will never heal from the pain of your past. How many of us will be honest and admit that the devil continuously bring up your past? Something that God has delivered you from. But the devil keeps trying to pull you back. He don't give up. He's on a mission. If he can keep you going back, thinking back, you can never fully move into the things of God. We can't hold on to what somebody did, how they did it, why they did it, where they did it at. You got to let that go. Jesus paid the ultimate price for everything that you and I would ever go through. He took the stripes on his back. The nails in his hand. The crown on his head. He took it all. Not so that we can still hold people captive. Why would he set you free? <laughs> and allow you to hold someone else captive to what they did. He said, Father, forgive them. Because see, we have to understand. If we don't forgive, he won't. If you won't, if you won't, and you don't forgive, you won't make it in. I don't know about you, but ain't nothing on this earth worth me missing heaven. I don't care if I got to get up and apologize to you every day. <laughs> Not saying I'm going to do it, but I'm just, I'm trying to make it plain. What happened to you was so awful that even God can't help you. Them that, that, listen, those are lies of the enemy. God can help us. But we have to allow him. He's not going to force help up on you. You have to get in the place and in the position to where you allow him to come in. To mend that broken heart. To deal with that pain. To show you how to endure. To tell you, to show you how to conquer you have to allow him to do it. He created us. <laughs> but we have to be honest. Or it's impossible to get. Uh, to, okay. Or it's impossible to get. Unaddicted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Once you addicted to something, the devil tell you ain't no way. You've been addicted to drugs. You've been addicted to alcohol. You've been addicted to porn. You've been addicted to fornication. You've been addicted to all this stuff. You're not going to be able to let that stuff go. But have you tried God? Have you gave him a chance? You didn't listen to what the devil had to say. Have you taken the time to give God that fair opportunity? Have you allowed him to speak as well? Because he's going to vindicate you. He's going to restore you. You're going to crave that substance or that behavior for the rest of your life. Those are lies of the enemy. To get you to that place. Well, there's no reason, you know, I might always just keep on this way. I'm never going to change. You got to be careful what you speak because what you speak is what you will see. What you speak is what you will harvest. You can't go out there and plant watermelons and then wonder why you see watermelon. That's what you planted. And even if you made the mistake and said, well, I meant to plant corn. Well, I mean, <laughs> you planted watermelon, so that's what you're going to see. We have to be careful what we speak. We got to be careful what we meditate on. We got to be careful what we continue to allow, allow in our spirit. God wants you, you and I to be free this morning. 
There's nothing your past can do for you. Your past is completed. Don't you keep bringing it up. And don't give nobody the keys to keep opening it up. It's sealed. No matter how the devil tries to keep you in bondage, influencing your thoughts to work against you, you can choose to stand against him. Some of us, you know, we ain't even trying to fight. We ain't putting up no fuss. We ain't asking no questions. When them thoughts come, we just, you know, we just begin to meditate on them. You know God done done something in your life. You know God done changed you. But here come this messy devil. He wants to bring it up. He wants to take you back. He wants to um, have you to start dwelling on it. Now God got to come in. <laughs> pick you up. <laughs> rinse you off. Dry you off. And get you back on track. And he'll do it. Because that's how much he loves us. But let's start putting up a fight. That's what I'm saying. Put up a fight. According to James 4 and 7. When you submit to God and resist him. He will flee. You know. He'll get tired. <laughs> he coming back. <laughs> but, for, <laughs> but for that moment. He will flee. He will give you a break because he got to co go and come up with something else. He like, listen, so Jelani getting smart. I can't get over on it like I used to. I can't come to it like I used to. I got to come up with some new stuff. The devil needs to know that you've been in the presence of God. And God then gave you some strategies. Because the devil going to know. But he said, Paul, we know. You know, but who are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> the devil need to know who you are. You don't have to agree with what he wants you to think. You don't have to just be in agreement. You don't have to align with the devil. Disagree with him. Talk back to him. Let him know this is not that. That's who I used to be. That's what I used to do. That's where I used to go. That's how I used to act. That's how I used to talk. That's how I used to walk. That's not who I am today. You can choose to walk in freedom Jesus offers you. Fill your mind with the truth of God's word. And when the devil tries to keep you in bondage of your past, where you came from, what you did, how you did it, what you didn't do, your mistakes, your shortcomings, he'll bring all those things up. But allow God to turn it around for your good. We all have a testimony. We all come from somewhere. If we be honest, we all got skeletons in our car that don't nobody know is there but, but the Father. And I thank God he chose to keep them there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> God is good. I thank God he chose to keep them there. But you don't have to live in bondage of your mind, your past, your childhood. Whatever you went through, even mistake that you may have made as an adult, as a parent, you don't have to live there. You don't have to stay there. See, God knew. See, first of all, we wasn't created perfect. We was created to be perfected. So for something to be perfected, it means it wasn't perfect. 
Can I get anybody just type, I understand? If you're not ashamed to type, I understand. You wasn't created perfect. You was created to be perfected. And because we are being perfected means we're not perfect. Every mistake that you and I would have ever made, God already knew. But yet and still, he chose you. Yet and still, he said, I can use you. He knew he could send you. Whatever God is asking you to do, don't feel like you're so broken. Don't feel like that you've been in such a low place that you've done too much. That God can't use you. That he can't change you. That he can't fix you. You say, Yolanda, but you don't know the things I've done. Jesus has already paid the price. I don't need to know what you've done. You may say, Yolanda, but you don't understand the people that I've hurt. God understands. Because your hurt came from being hurt. It's not an excuse. But God understands. And God forgives. You may say, well, Yolanda, they hurt me so bad. I, I just don't think I'll ever be able to forgive them. If you don't, he won't. If you choose not to, he won't. Speak those words of freedom to him. Keep choosing freedom and you will experience it. The more you speak about being free, the more you will experience freedom. Once I allow God to come in and change my thoughts, how I felt, how I was living, how I was thinking, I realized what having a true relationship with him really looked like. And it wasn't everything that I was taught, that I've learned, that I've seen, that I experienced. I had to have my own relationship with him. And it didn't look like where I came from. But I'm grateful this morning. I apologize. Thank you all for hopping on, for hanging in there. Um, those that came all the way in the room, those that are standing on the outside looking in, and those that will come on after, I thank God for you. And here's the prayer. Father, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to set me free. Help me embrace the freedom you have provided me. Amen. That was beautiful. We have a choice. I have a choice. You have a choice. Choose freedom. God showed me this. Jesus has freed us. But when you've been in bondage for so long, when you've been told something so long, when you've been taught something for so long, and it's just like God is trying to free you. He's saying you can go. You can enter in. You can pursue. That belongs to you. And it's just like a dog that's in it, that's been caged. And that's all he knows is the walls of that cage. And you may go and open up the cage, open the door of the cage. And that dog may come and he may just kind of look out, kind of smell and, you know, he's trying to smell and see if it's okay. He don't realize that he's free to go. He's free to come out. Because he's been in bondage for so long. Your past have had you in bondage for so long. That pain has had you in bondage for so long. That divorce have had you in pain for so long. That abortion that had you in pain for so long. He said, you're free. You're free to come out. You're released. You've been forgiven. Will you walk in your freedom this morning? Will you walk in your freedom this morning? 
I got to get off here. <laughs> I pray something was said that will cause you to search your heart. Look at where you at and say, Yolanda, I have been in bondage. I've beat myself down. I've allowed others to tear me down because of where I come from, because of what I did. But today, I'm taking my freedom back. I'm walking in my freedom. Because God said, if he's for you, who could be against you? He sent Jesus to set us free. Remove the chains, remove the shackles off your mind, off your heart, and walk in freedom. The price already been paid. The door is open. The gate has been lifted. The walls have been torn down. It's up to you to come forth. It's up, it's up to you to step out of the box. It's up to you to come out of that prison. Come out of that cage. Come out of that dark place of your past. Many of us are haunted by our past. God's saying this morning, let it go. Let it go. Let them go. Because the longer you hold on to them, they're still in your freedom. I got to go. <laughs> I got to get off here. Again, thanks for hopping on. Speak life. No matter what you're going through or facing, speak life over your friend, your family, your friends, your foes, those that said that you'll never mount to anything, go anywhere, make it out. Speak life over them as well. You have nothing to lose but everything to gain. Until next time, everyone, have an amazing day. And last but not least, least choose freedom. Until next time, stay blessed.